What's going on, Coach Luca is back here and we're actually trying, testing out something new. Uh, it's not new from my real life, but it's actually just new on video. So uh, what I decided to do, actually earlier this morning, I had an in-staff uh, with my coaches and during that in-staff, we dove into some program design, practical stuff um, that I was sharing that they can now use in programming for their clients, their semi-private training clients, private training clients. And I'm actually gonna just in-staff, like imagine that I'm in-staffing for you. So you are the student currently or a coach and I'm gonna go over what I went through this morning and hopefully it'll help you in designing programs. Um, and we're gonna kind of riff, right? Because again, like when this is a little less structured like vlogs because I'm doing it as we go along uh, and I'm just taking that morning in-staff in applying it to this and as I go along I'm sure some stuff will pop up in my head that will hopefully help you out so uh, we've done a bunch like, a lot of like uh, vlogs on program design uh, I want to I want to show you guys really practical and actually mirror some of the things that we deal with here so when when clients come here on on the more private semi-private side of things they're usually training somewhere between one and four times a week okay now I'm gonna show you guys a model between two to four which is actually what most people would do when they strength train throughout the week. They're gonna do somewhere between two strength training sessions to four strength training sessions. You know, maybe even a five. I'll, I'll give an example for even a fiver, okay? What well, I'm talking about strength training, not the additional conditioning which we'll plug in. So when you, you know, designing programs, uh, and this is what I share with my team, first you kind of decide the, the, the template, right? The, uh, if the template is, like for instance, let's, let's look at a two, t uh, two day a week, okay? Two times a week, pretty much we're almost always going to do a full body, right? It's going to be some type of full body training. So let's go full body A and then we'll go full body B, okay? Oops, B, there we go, okay? And we'll, we'll kind of come back to this as we, as we break this stuff down. For honestly, for most people, if they're doing two times a week, full body is going to be the way to go. Uh, you know, now what are they going to do? We're come, we'll come back to the methods because first we got to determine the template, right? Now, if we're going to go to three times a week, okay, now there's a, there's a couple other options. Most of the time, it's going to be full body. Okay, now there's a couple of options that we can do on full body. One is the ABA. BAB model that I've talked about before, which means there's really just two workouts. There's an A and B workout, and from week to week, they'll do ABA, so they'll get twice A in week one, then they'll go BAB, they'll get twice B in week two, and so on for, for instance, a three to six week block. I like this for a beginner, right? I like this for a beginner because they get to do the movements more frequently. Like, they repeat the same workout more frequently, which is actually better, because think of it as practice, right? Too much novelty uh, at the beginning, I don't think is the greatest thing. Again, if like they're a beginner, we see the best results kind of here, okay? Then we have three times a week full body, uh, the option that's not full body, which is essentially lower, upper, and then full, okay? This is actually one I'm currently on right now. Personally, uh, once people have become a little bit more intermediate, I think this is a good one uh, to do. And again, you know, with the full body, ABA, you can also have ABC, simple, which is just three days a week, right? And it'd be three full body days, right? So you can ABA, BAB, or ABC, three different programs. Again, I like to transition to this one right here once people have had some experience, uh, meaning even if they've been with us for like, for instance, 12, 16 weeks, so on and so forth, we'll kind of sh we'll shift to that and, and stay with that. And look, you could do three full body days a week for life. Um, but again, lower upper full is a, is a really, really good model. I enjoy, a lot of clients enjoy it also. And once we get to four days a week, and remember, none of these are like set in stone. There's a lot of options. This is templates, right? Legitimately templates that we'll use, our coaches will use. Four times a week, then we have our lower upper, lower upper, okay? Which, again, this is like, you, you guys have seen me share a lot of it, whereas, for instance, a submax effort, lower day, submax effort, upper day, dynamic effort, lower day, repetition effort, upper day, maybe, 
right? Uh, and we'll go into the methods in a little bit. But another one that we actually use here quite a bit is, is lower, upper, and then full, and then I call this weak links. And this is, uh, so weak links will be like working more on stuff that you're not hitting as much off, you wanna bring up calves, shoulders, arms, um, abs, things of that nature, but things that aren't like very, very stressful on the CNS side of things, this would kind of be a little bit more repetition effort method, okay? Uh, but that's a breakdown of a four time a week. And another one that on a four time a week that I like is if we go push, pull, legs, and arms, or you could even have a push, pull, legs, and it goes back to push and you're rotating those three, but it's a four day a week program. So it's actually one that one of my uh, best friends, Jay Ferruja, really likes. We've used all of these. So these are templates, and the thing is like, what we'll do when, uh, again, when programming, first we see what the client wants to achieve, their training history, health history, all those different things, and then determine, first of all, like what template we're gonna use before we go into choosing the methods, and then from the methods we start using the exercises, right? So again, this, these are uh, like the templates that you can use. There, there's absolutely more, but over, again, 20 years of coaching, these are the ones that uh, have worked the best for us. And, you know, if you went to a five-day-a-week model, uh, you know, there's kind of obviously the bodybuilding split here that you can do, where you do shoulders and chest and back and so on and so forth, which we don't really do much of here, not to say that it makes, you know, that nobody should ever use it, but it's just not nearly as effective. But, again, if we were to go five days a week, we would essentially take the push, pull, legs, and arms model uh, and just be rotating it, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to now break this down and wipe it off, and we're going to take an example, right? I'm going to take this lower, upper, full day and uh, break it down, what that would look like while explaining the different methods, okay? So this way, we're legitimately going through creating a program uh, as an example and kind of riffing on everything else, right? So we're gonna go like this, okay? Now, before we go into this, let's touch on, like, I love concurrent training. I've talked about this quite a bit. And there's different methods, right? The strength methods that we can use. Because again, like, once we determine the template that we're gonna use, now we're gonna go into methods. And I'll, I'll give you guys a breakdown, a little bit of a, like, you know, if you're a beginner, what makes no sense from these methods or not much sense, um, and where you would use those. But we, number one here, we have like the max effort method. You guys have seen me talk about it, but the, you know, the reality is like max effort method is when we're working up to a max, and usually like a one rep max, okay? So this would be like, uh, and I'll, I'll give you guys my thoughts around this. So, so this would be, for example, I'll give you an example of what that might be like a five times one, or like a six times one, okay? What that would mean is, in our world, is like through five sets, so you got your ramp up sets, and then through five sets, we wanna get to a top set of one for that day, okay? So for example, let's say trap or deadlift. I'm gonna do my warm up ramp up sets, and let's say my max is 500 times one, okay? My, my first working set might be, you know, 405 times one, and 425 times one, 445 times one. 465 times one, 4, 485 times one, and then at the end I'm gonna push, maybe I hit 505, and that's my best, right? That would be a max effort, uh, I would say, method training, okay, type of, type of approach. And once we plug it in here, you guys will see what I'm talking about. Now, what I, I, I still consider, right, what I still consider here, max effort would be if we did the same thing working up to 3RM, okay? or maybe a 5RM, okay? With that same model, I would still consider it max effort, even though if it's not a single. Although, you know, when it comes to like, for instance, West Side, true max effort method, it would be working up to a single, right? So I just wanna make, make that clear. This is not something that we'll use for beginners. It makes no sense. Again, somebody's coming in, they wanna get stronger, they wanna feel better, build muscle, uh, improve bone density, you know, improve their performance, drop body fat. Like, we're, we're not gonna really spend a lot of, actually no time here at the beginning. But we will spend time in a sub-max effort met method. And that's like 
the rep ranges of, I would say that three to six, okay? Like when we're building strength in that three to six challenging reps range, okay? And this is actually, we use this a lot with just about everybody in every format, okay? So that's what that three to six is. Dynamic effort method is where we're focusing on creating, so I, I've talk, talked about this like surfing the force curve, right? But we're working on things like speed strength, strength speed, right? We're, we're, uh, whether it's like in that, I'll say 50 to 75% of max, rep, uh, max effort range, or even like I said, lower weights, moving them faster. To me, that's dynamic effort method is those things, right? Where we're moving decent amounts of weight fast. And I love velocity-based training here where we can actually get numbers back to see how fast we're moving the weight. And for anybody that's wanting to improve performance, like this makes a lot of sense. Now, with beginners, we will not be using a lot of this, but I'll show you what we will be using and how in a program and give you examples. But again, very beneficial and especially, you know, where we, we love to use this is if I got an athlete or somebody wants to improve performance and we can test and they, maybe their, their maximum strength is really, really high, right? And actually, uh, what's, this is interesting, yeah. This is an old, old vlog that I had video and what's cool is that like this is still up here right if somebody's got really good maximal strength and i can you know give an example of some of um, the nfl guys that i'm training you know improving their for instance trap bar deadlift from 750 pounds to 800 pounds is really not going to improve their performance right but maybe they're you know in that speed strength power category they're not doing really that well they can't produce you know force fast in these 10 to 60 percent of one rep max uh, ranges or, you know, and, and they can't do it in multi-directionally, right? Well, guess what? We're going to work here, and that's going to improve their performance. And that's where dynamic effort method uh, comes into play really, really well. I also think that once you get to, the, you know, intermediate level, uh, I would say, client, they enjoy doing things like that, right? Trap bar, deadlift, jumps, you know, uh, I would say, box, you know, speed box squats, of course, with good form, making sure the exercise fits their body as well. So, this is where that comes into play. And so I wanted to show that because I've done a previous video on this on you know, where dynamic effort method kind of comes into play. Then we got the explosive effort. You know, this to me is more like the plyometric stuff. This is the jumps, the throws, uh, especially things that like will, will train elasticity or like really low loads, but moving those exceptionally fast where it's more like twitchy, okay? Now this we do use a lot, even with beginners, Again, we're just regressing that movement. So again, when I write the program out here, as we're going along with it, I'll show you what you got, um, show you what that, what that means. Because for instance, I could be doing a box jump, you know, on a six inch box for somebody that's 60 years old, and that's gonna be explosive for them, but very, very safe. Or they might be doing foot fire, or they might be slamming a ball, or doing, a, 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 I would say, a med ball toss or something like that, right? Where for somebody that's a little bit more advanced, they might do broad jumps, they might do bounding, single at box jumps, you know, uh, I would say hurdle hops into box jumps. Okay, that's our explosive effort method right there. Clusters are just a, uh, are a great method to build both uh, strength and muscle, like so hypertrophy, right? Because those are the things that you guys have seen me do even in my programs, like, you know, do a set of two, rest 15 seconds, do a set of two, rest 15 seconds, do a set of one. Right, so we're basically being able to get more volume at the higher intensity than we'd usually be able to get with that specific load. So again, this is um, a method and I'll show you guys where that fits in. Then we have repeated effort method. This is like the eight to 20 rep range. More, and the thing is it's more uh, mostly, I would say not mostly, but a lot of isolation exercises. Just more things single joint, less, less multi-joint, right? But it could be like, uh, if you guys see this, this bench, you know, the flex bench behind me, could be that, tricep snap downs, curls, shoulder presses, uh, uh, lateral raises, things of that nature. Now this is how we usually use most of these, right? Doesn't mean that we can't do things like a goblet squat or anything like that, we absolutely can, okay? But it's the, in that 18 to 20 rep range, it's not very, because these, so max effort, sub-max effort method, dynamic effort method, these are highly intense in, 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 on your nervous system, right? So they can fatigue the nervous system a lot, okay? Explosive effort, medium range-ish. Uh, clusters will definitely, these are very challenging on the nervous system, but the repeated effort method is not, that's, that's a pretty low to medium uh, challenge. Like 
So we're, we're getting obviously, uh, you know, some, some volume, some metabolic stress there, but it's not, it's not anything crazy. Then we got antagonist and agonist supersets. So, you know, agonist supersets might be, like I said, same muscle group, antagonist might be something like a dumbbell bench press superset with a T-bar row, right? We got a push and a pull. Uh, those are, like I said, medium, uh, on the CNS, it's like that moderate kind of fatigue. High volume band work, I love it for recovery, on, on recovery days, as well as just getting, like I said, metabolic stress, getting the blood flow. Sometimes it's like a feel good. You, you guys see me do a vlog where I'm doing my upper body workout and I'm doing a whole bunch of higher rep band work to, uh, to prep for a, a bench session, for a heavy bench session. So pull aparts, pull overs, flies, right? I'm not fatiguing it like crazy, uh, but this also gets used usually either on recovery days or even at the end of workouts. And then the 61225 method, that's a muscle building method that actually is very, very stressful. We'll, we'll use it. And it, I'll give you an example of this one where it might be something like for six reps, I'm gonna do a front squat with a load of uh, an eight to 10 rep max. 12 might be a front foot elevated static lunge. And then 25 could be like uh, leg extensions or sissy squats or something of that nature, right? So we're kind of just going more compound lift, you know, split the single leg here, and this is a very isolated lift, but it's for the same muscle group, and it's definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of stress on that specific, uh, this methodology, it stresses the muscle, but obviously it's a muscle building strategy. So as we have these different methods, right, I'm going, okay, let's take an example of a lower upper full, um, and we're gonna determine, let's say this is an intermediate client, so meaning, They've trained with us for two years. They, they got their base movement patterns down. Um, you know, they've got some really good results and we're kind of trying to kick it a little bit more into gear. So on that lower day, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, some submax effort methods here, some explosive, and you guys know I love contrast training because again, you know, most clients like really do wanna improve performance and athleticism and it gives them, it, it builds a lot of stuff that people want in real life, right? When it, whether it's being more athletic, more um, high, you know, uh, high threshold motor unit stuff that they want to recruit. So we're gonna use explosive effort method. And then here we're also gonna uh, go repeat effort method, right? So again, we said this client's like been training for two years. So we're gonna start with, remember dynamic warmups, I'm not plugging them in right now, but of course there's dynamic warmups. And from there we're gonna go Trap bar deadlift. And that trap bar deadlift, we're gonna go like in a four by four, okay? So that's like in that submax effort rep range, right? And we wanna lift those four sets over 90%. So this is a, this is a strategy that I, um, I teach my coaches, like I said, in the in staff, which is going for over 90% of that day. Now, here, how does that look like? Check this out. So let's say, because uh, I'm going to keep wiping this down so you guys can see it, but I do some ramp up sets. So I do 135 pounds for like three reps, 185 for three reps. Then I go to like 255 for three reps. And then from there, I'm going to go like 350 for maybe one. And then I'm going to go to my working set because I obviously know my load. So from there, I'm gonna go and hit 405 for four, okay? I'm gonna go 445 for four, 465 for four, and like for instance, that's my best that day, okay? So 465 for four is my best, like I, I got that, maybe I had one rep left in the tank, maybe not, okay? And then everything that's over 90% of this would count. So what's 90% of 465? It's about 415, right? So everything is 415 or up. So 445 counts, 465 counts. I gotta do two more sets. So now that was like really heavy, I'm gonna drop back down. I'm gonna get 445 for four, and then I'm gonna get a 425 for four. Bam. And that's my four sets, right? Because everything over 90% counts. So this is, this is the rule that I like when it comes to uh, that submax effort training because on a different days, you might be really tired and the next time around, you know, your best might be 445 times four and then everything over 90% of that's gonna count, okay? Uh, so I just wanted to give you guys this example again because this is an in-staff. So 
because I like contrast training, we're going to insert the explosive, explosive effort method here. Okay. And for example, for this client, they're uh, intermediate. They can definitely do so. They're going to do a broad jump. Okay. And we're going to do a broad jump for four sets of five. From there, we're going to go a second exercise. Now remember, d depending on what this person wants, and I'm giving just uh, examples, right? Like the second exercise can be uh, a supplement exercise to the first one. So what is a, a, you know, going to build up the trap bar deadlift? Well, I mean, it could be a, a number of different exercises. It could be RDL. In this case, we're going to go with a dumbbell Bulgarian, Bulgarian split squat, right? Because we want to put in some of that single leg work, okay? And we're going to do three sets of eight as this supplement exercise, right? And that's going to go under that, I would say, uh, repetition effort method. Number three, right, so then the, the next exercises usually are going to be bit like banging out weaklings, okay? So how do we um, kind of bang out weaklings? And maybe this uh, person has a weaker posterior chain, so like we got to get the glutes up. So might be glute drive, okay? So we're going to go glute drive here for three sets of 10. And number four, like a glute ham raise and hit the hammies a little bit more, right? And again, we can determine, like, they're weaker with knee flexion and hamstrings or, you know, uh, extended. So either way, this might be a supported glue ham raise with bands or, uh, you know, me helping them out. And we're going to go here for 12. Right, so here, you can see we did uh, submax effort. We did explosive effort as a contrast. And then we used mostly, I would say, um, uh, we used a repetition effort method for the rest of it. Okay, and that would be our lower body day for this client. And then, again, what we could do over the weeks, we could go very simple linear, where the trap bar deadlift, you know, uh, we're just trying to uh, raise the load. But uh, again, when people ask, what about deloads? Well, here's the thing, for most general population clients, we just that kind of adjust. So let's say the next week they're really smoked, we might do three sets of four, and the loads will be at a little bit lower. But then the week after that, they're gonna be feeling better. Guess what? Now we might go to five sets of four, bump up the load, you know, add a rep on these or add a little bit of weight on these to progress them, right? Then today we're not going to dive too deep into how to progress. I've done some videos on how to progress these things, but that's going to be a lower body day, okay? From there, we're going to go to our upper body day, kind of keeping that same model. So remember, a lot of times you're going to see this, right, where the normal thing for, for me to do here is be like, hey, there's going to be a bench on upper body day. But this, let's say this person is like, hey, I want to get better at chin-ups and lift more of my body weight on chin-ups. Okay, cool. Well, here, here's the deal. So instead of doing a, you know, push as a bench, which is on upper, usually what most people will use, we're going to go here and do a neutral grip chin, okay? And we're going to use that same four by four model because usually uh, we'll do that on lower and upper again depending on the goal and so what can we contrast we can do kneeling slams to create an uh, explosive contrast set, set here right and we're going to go four sets of six on this okay again so now we're again going submax effort we're using explosive effort method but now we're going to go and use some antagonist supersets because on upper body not only is it more effective for time also again you know there's some, some we can get more volume in short amount of time while the muscles resting meaning if I do in this case so let's say I'm going to do a dumbbell bench press for three sets of eight and then I'm going to superset it with a t-bar roll okay and now it's going to be three sets of eight for instance with a pause Right now we got a superset, meaning we do dumbbell bench press, rest about 30 seconds, 40 seconds, do our T-bar roll, then have a full break of, for instance, 90 seconds in between. Okay. Again, so because this you know specific client wanted to work on getting the pull-ups up, we'll still do an, an assistant exercise here, and we're gonna go some type of push-up variation. And this is one of the things I brought up to the team as well. Is like. If we have some type of closed chain, right, scaps locked, 
We want to have something open chain, so like a push-up where the scaps can move, or a landmine press or something of that nature. So this was, you know, I, I, I just let them know, there's got to be a one-to-one -one in the program throughout the, throughout the week where if we have, a, you know, a barbell bench press, there's got to be some type of push-up where the scap moves, or if there's a dumbbell bench press, we've got to have some type of landmine. We have to have something that's moving the scapula, okay? So we're going to have a push-up variation, and this one we're going to go to technical quality failure here, and then we're going to have a half kneeling. This is going to be an angled, so pull, lat pull down, right? It's cable pull down. And we're going to do, you know, three sets of 12 per side here. And this one's going to be a tricep because we also want to get, you know, uh, this person wants to work on their arms, so we might go arms, so we're going to go some dumbbell curls as well. Right, so this is just, an, again, an example of, like, programs that we write. These are all, what are, what are we doing here? Or, or for, let's actually, like, switch this up so that we can plug in some of the stuff we talked about. All right, so let's go 4A and 4B. We're going to go uh, and do our high-volume band work, and we're going to go band curls and then triceps snap down. Why? This is metabolic stress. Uh, let's say we're going to do high rep sets, like 30 to 50 reps here. Uh, let's go two to three, okay? Right, so not only are they going to get a bunch of blood flows, metabolic stress, they're going to get a pump, they're going to leave, they're going to be very happy, right? <laughs> so, but th this is actually a examples of a, a real program that you might see, you know, uh, for one of our upper body days for our client, right? And Again, we're working on submax effort, we got explosive effort, we got repetition effort, and we're finishing off with high volume band work here, okay? So we got a lower, we got our upper day, and you can now imagine this, you know, once we go to our full body day, um, you'll kind of see that, that AB or ABA template that I wrote out earlier, how that full body day would look like, and I'll give you guys some examples here, okay? But so let's go down to full body day. And pr let's say, like I said, this is an intermediate client, and they said that they wanted to uh, improve their explosiveness, right? They're, they, they're a weekend warrior for basketball, so they want to also the, uh, improve their explosiveness. Well, dynamic effort method, you know, again, these are examples. We're actually doing as many, like five to 10 sets with lower reps, like two to four reps because we're really focusing on the quality and the speed of the movement, right? And what I love doing actually here, uh, usually if we have something like a gym where, where we're me measuring velocity, and, and when their velocity drops 10% from their peak is when we'll end the set. So sometimes this could be more reps, maybe it could be five, but usually it's gonna be like three to four, right? Now, you know, what type of exercises can we move, you know, between the dynamic effort method? Well, it could be things like trap bar deadlift jumps or a lesser load on a trap bar in a, I would say, trap bar clean pull, right, where we're essentially uh, doing that clean pull movement but without the regular bar. But we could do a hand clean. It could be a high pull. It could be so many different things. You know, it could be a box squat with no bands. It could be a box squat with bands uh, with 50% of load, just moving it as fast as possible. So we got a lot of different, I would say, methods that we can use here. But let's go and, uh, again, we said this person's intermediate, has got quality movements. Uh, we're gonna do a safety bar squat, okay? To box, okay? And we're gonna use about 50% of max load, and we're gonna go six sets of three here. Now, we're still gonna go and add some explosive effort method here, and we're gonna go low hurdle to box jump, okay? And here we're gonna go, again, six sets of three also, right? So they're, they're gonna go control down, kinda like pause on the pad with 50% of weight, explode up as fast as they possibly can for three reps, walk over, get 20 seconds, 30 seconds break, do three hurdle hops to box jump, rest for a minute. Usually we want to have about, you know, 60 seconds break here this, uh, uh, after they do this going back to safety squat uh, to box. And we're going to do that six, uh, six rounds, okay? So now, like you can kind of see, we're using dynamic effort method, explosive effort method 
to improve this person's, you know, we're, we're surfing that force curve that I showed you guys earlier, right? Elasticity, and here we're working on, I would say that's uh, strength speed. Now, from there, we didn't pattern in. So remember that day one, we had a hinge, right? So we had a hinge, and we worked like the posterior chain. Uh, we had some single leg work, but now we're gonna go front squat, right? And we're gonna still use that, uh, we're gonna go three sets of three, so the volume is gonna be a little bit lower, right? But we're gonna use our submax effort method. Now at this point in time, we can superset this with an upper body exercise, a full body day. <clears throat> so we're gonna go one arm dumbbell row for three sets of six per side. Okay, and again, <clears throat> we're fitting in, what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at what this person needs, right? So this is obviously an imaginary person that we've created, but we're looking at like, what's gonna bring up their weaknesses? What do they need to improve on? Again, we're gonna go here and go to dumbbell walking lunges. We said they're an intermediate. I actually uh, wouldn't give walking lunges to a, a, a beginner, okay? And let's go, uh, we're gonna go cable, seated fly. So these are like upright. And here at the end, again, I'm gonna go into like, what are some weak links here? So hamstring roller. Face pulls, two to three sets. Okay, so again, like the, the, the question to ask yourself is, you know, you might look at that and go like, this is quite a bit. This is actually an hour, 75 minute session. But the, it's, it, because it's an intermediate person that can actually handle this, we're perfectly fine doing it. If it was a beginner, we'd cut this down, less exercises different models, we, using, we wouldn't use dynamic effort method. Now, if we're looking at this and going, okay, if this was a full body day, imagine just replacing this top dynamic effort part with a submax effort part, right? So if we had an A and B, right? Maybe A would be a trap bar deadlift, but we could superset that trap bar deadlift with some type of push, dumbbell bench press, right? On day B, it could be some type of squat, like for instance, let's say they're proficient, they would do a safety uh, bar squat to box, and that will be superset uh, with, for instance, even a chin-up, right? That A, B, A, because they're not gonna use as much load because they're gonna be a beginner. But now you can kind of start seeing how this comes together, right? And again, like when, when I was uh, doing the in-staff, we wrote out all the different movements, right? We wrote out a hinge, a squat, a basically single leg variation, a push, a pull, a carry or drag, and some type of, you know, or a twist slash anti-twist. And then checking off the boxes as the whole program was on the board, you go like, okay, what do we have here, right? What does this person need more of? Is there more horizontal pulling than there is pushing, right? Do we have a bunch of upper back work? Are we, do we have single leg work? What about if they're an athlete, single leg work? Do we have a lateral lunge? Again, we were doing examples and kind of playing devil's advocate here. But here you can kind of see, again, lower, upper, full, how we broke it down into three workouts per week. If we had four, you know, you play around again with that because, for instance, somebody that wants to improve their lower body athleticism, if it was a four-day program, they might have a submax effort lower body, then they have a submax effort upper body, then they'd have a dynamic effort, you know, lower body, and a repetition effort upper body, right? They want to get maybe a little bit more muscular in their upper body, but improve their explosive and performance in their lower body. Look, you start with the template of what they can do training-wise based on a uh, schedule, uh, training history, all those things, then you pick templates. And then after templates, you insert the exercises that support their goals and exercises that they can do. Because again, like, you know, safety bar squat. What if they can't put a bar on their back? You know, what are we doing then? C can they do a front squat? Can they do a, a, a double kettlebell squat? Can they do, a, 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 say, a, a belt squat possibly, right? And then is that even a good choice for speed work? So again, you know, there's so many different things that we look at when we plug and play these exercises. But I wanted to show you guys on how you can essentially um, program this. Now, 
I, I wanted to, because there was a question uh, in the Insta app also, like, okay, if they're an athlete or if they want to become more athletic, uh, how do we then plug in, for instance, on days uh, lower, upper, full, other things? Like, you know, because we have a contrast set, but like a lot of the guys that come in here, especially like high school, college pros, we'll go, for instance, lower, upper, full. One of the models, uh, if we'll do a couple of exercises, at the beginning, let's say on lower day, we'll work, work on linear, linear speed and plyos. So before we start with the strength training, you know, we might do different like 10 yards accelerations. We may do, uh, I would say, any type of like hurdle hops, forward, back, okay? So just moving in, like I said, in that sagittal plane. And we're gonna work north, south speed, like linear speed type stuff, 20s, 30s, whatever it may be. And then on upper day, now we might go lateral or multi-directional speed. So it could be like multi-directional hops, lateral slides, turn and sprint, things of that nature, right? Uh, skater jumps, so on and so forth. You know, different cone drills that create that multi-directional uh, multi speed. And then on, on a full body day, chaos slash reactive, you know? And again, this is one day of splitting things up, at least that we have, that we'll do for general population too if they wanna improve athleticism, where this might be things where it's, they're sprinting towards me, I point left, they go left, or they spin left, or they stop and go right. We'll do a lot of different drills. Uh, again, with basketball players, go right, go left. So they're reacting to where I'm pointing, or even saying it, like so meaning, I'll say left, they have to go left, right things of that nature, right, chaos reactor. So that's one way of splitting it up if you're doing three days a week. Um, but again, that's where we'll do a couple of exercises. So maybe it's pogo jumps, and after pogo jumps, we got some type of broad jump, or if we, um, you know, we might do some skater jumps across, and then we'll do speed lateral slide band resisted. I mean, there's a lot of different ways we can go here, and we determine what to do with the client or with what they need. Um, but this is, again, if, it, this is a perfect example of like we do dynamic warm-ups, we do this, then we go into our strength training. Um, and of course, needs analysis, like we wanna look at like who the person is, what they need, what their training history is. Um, but again, remember how this works, right? First we go off of the template which is determined by what the person wants, their goals, their schedule, what they, what they can do, right? What they can do, and then from there, we go to methods. Right, and again, we determine the methods based on what they want to achieve, and then from methods, that's when we go to exercises. And then after the exercises is when we go to like reps, sets, tempo, right, time in between rest and all that stuff, right? So again, hopefully this has been helpful uh, as an in-staff. And if there's other things that you want to dive into based on this, hey, let me know in the comments uh, because as we do future in-staffs with, again, I'm going to do future in-staffs for you guys, I will dive into the things that uh, you want to learn about because what we didn't cover here is what would happen on, you know, energy system training that would match because, again, with concurrent conjugate training, right, we're, we're also working on conditioning, but it shouldn't affect your strength and muscle building. It should actually complement it. Uh, and maybe that's for another time, but for right now, Take this, apply it, let me know what you think, let me know what else you want to learn, and I'll see you in the next InStaff. Peace out.